Good afternoon. I am beyond humbled to be here today. Um, I had a lot to think about. I, I knew immediately what I wanted to talk about when I was contacted to talk about TEDx in TEDx, but then I didn't know how I want to say it. And I don't think I still do, so we'll find out together. Um, I'm going to be talking about the art of giving. And I'm not here to inspire you. I'm not here to motivate you. I'm not here to tell you what the perfect formula to give is, what you need to do or how you need to do it. Um, I'm hoping that you can leave here having a better understanding of what you think the best way to give would be in your case, because we're all made up differently. We all have our different makeups. Um, how do I go back? OK. When I think of giving, this is what comes to mind. As simple as that, you're smiling in the face of your brother is charity. This sums up giving for me. Uh, I can leave now, but I'll tell you some more of, of how I think um, you, can, you can implement this in, a, in your everyday life. Growing up, I was such a smiley child. I smiled a lot. I still do that. I'm not as young as I was, but I still like to smile a lot. I still walk around. My mom keeps telling me, who are you smiling to? I have this habit of smiling at people. And I never understood why. I just, it, it was this immediate um, feeling that just came to my mind. Every time I saw someone, a stranger, I walk into an elevator, I, I walk into a place, and I just smile. And growing up, I realized that it's that feeling of getting a smile back, being recognized, because you smile at someone and you expect them to smile back at you. And, and if they smile back, then they've seen you, and, and they know you exist, and you're there. And um, obviously, I didn't think about all the details growing up as a child, but I think the adult me would probably analyze that that's why I used to do that. It's funny how we always talk about giving being so selfless. And I happen to disagree. I think giving is very selfish. We're all looking for something in return. You never give selflessly, even as a mother. And I have a, an eight-year-old, almost eight in June. And I, I give her love and attention and everything. But it's because I want her to be happy. I want her to love me back. I want her to think I'm a good mom. We're always looking for something in return. And it's only natural. That makes us human. And it's not the bad kind of selfish. But we need to be a bit selfish in order for us to give. And, and there are so many different forms of giving. And I know that the first thing that comes to mind when people are talking about giving is financial giving. And that's the easiest way to give. That's literally the easiest thing to do. Someone needs something, write them a check. Your, your child wants a toy, get them three. And they're happy. But then a week later, a month later, they're on to the next toy. They want more. I look back at, at my own childhood, and I don't re I remember I wanted a lot of toys. I loved Barbies. I loved Lego. I loved a lot of other things. But I don't remember the exact toy that I was so desperately in love with or, or that I wanted so badly. Although our childhood back in the 80s was so much more selective when you wanted to buy and get things. Kids nowadays have everything. But I remember the moments my parents spent with me. I remember Friday breakfasts, which are sacred rituals that are still ongoing. I remember my dad taking us every single Friday to the pool and waiting all day for him to get up and take us to the pool. And he only had one day off. His weekend was just one day off. And he'd get up and take us to the pool, spend all day with us under the sun, yelling and screaming and playing and splashing water and having french fries by the pool. That's such a vivid memory for me. I don't remember the toys. I remember my mom making breakfast or, or teaching us after school for hours and getting angry and, and asking us to repeat things, otherwise we're not going to watch TV. And their time spent, they're, they're making the time. It's the art of giving, give time. Nowadays, our children, unfortunately, and I think we're all guilty of this, instead of spending time with them and interacting, they're on their iPads, they're in the play area, they're, they're doing something else, they're busy, because you want to be busy doing something else. And like Nitin said in, in the talk before, 
these are times gone. Your child is going to grow up before you even know it. I'm almost 32. My parents are here. And I can't believe I'm at an age where I'm actually an adult. But around them, I get all tense, and I still feel like a child, because I'm always going to be their child. And I look at my own daughter, and I think, I want her to have a childhood like I did. And I want her to have a better childhood, because life now is simpler, and we can use it for our own good. But instead, we're always going for the easy way out. Give love, give attention, give comfort. How many of you give it your all at your own job? Everyone goes in, like, you're lucky to have a job. People ages ago, if you had a university degree, you were very um, well educated and, and, and you wanted to get hired. Now you have a university degree, a master's degree, and you're working on, on, on more degrees, and you're, the, the market is way more competitive. So you're very lucky if you have a good, stable job. Enjoy it, love it, give it your all. It's, it's who you are. Your work says a lot about you. And being an artist, and I, I, I try to practice art as much as I can, um, I've always been looking for inspiration, which is a natural thing for artists. And more often than not, there are artist blocks where it's not, just, it's not happening, it's not coming to you, everything is just so blah. But then I realized, and that was the turning point for me, that I was looking for the wrong thing. We don't need inspiration, because inspiration is very temporary. It comes and goes, it's that, that, that quick thing. We need motivation. We need a motive. We need a reason. We need, we, need, we need something to look forward to. We need to make the most out of it. And that's when the postcard initiative, in my case, happened. I, it was a point in my life where everything was so flat. And the only constant in my life has been art. And even that was flat. And when I came across the whole idea of helping people and, 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 and drawing more smiles on people's faces, that I can make someone smile. I can make the, the mother of this child smile. Her sisters, her brothers, herself, give a life back. You realize there is more to us than just that single person on your phone, on your office desk, with your family. And we don't spend as much time with our families. We are there physically, but how many of us are there mentally? Or emotionally. How many of you have a conversation with someone where they keep looking down and, and you can tell they're, they really want to check their phone but they're trying to be polite but then they're not with you because they're waiting for you to finish your sentence because they want to look back into their phone. How many of you encounter that? How many of you woke up this morning and smiled at their spouse, at their partner, at their, I don't know, nanny, children, office boy, watchman? A stranger in the corridor? How many of you smiled at someone this morning? Just smiled. How many of you, how many of you said good morning or, or said thank you? And these are things that we keep teaching our kids to do, but how many of us practice what we preach? It's a smile. It, all it takes is a smile. And it reminds me of a story um, a couple of years ago. I get into the elevator, and there was already a lady there with bags, and she was crying her eyes out. Her eyes were so puffed. Her nose was, was all bloated. And, and it was very awkward. It was a long ride up, and I was stuck with this lady, and I felt so bad. And, and because we're curious, I was wondering what was making her so sad. And I just, I just stood there silently, awkwardly, waiting to, to reach my floor. And the moment, like right before I left the elevator, I just looked at her and I smiled. I was like, have a good day. And, and she knew I knew, and I knew she knew what I meant. And it was that moment, and she actually smiled back. She was crying, like the tears were there. But she looked back at me, and she smiled. And I, I choked up, because I was going to cry now, because I felt all excited. It was that adrenaline. But then it was as simple as a smile, making the effort. This is giving. I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease a couple of years ago, and I had to go through all the tests and all the MRIs and CD scans and this and that, and I have frequent doctor visits all the time. And I have the best doctor in the world. When was the last time your doctor texted you to ask if your symptoms are better? Anyone? Never, right? My doctor does that. My doctor calls me a day after my visit to make sure that I got my results. He does it personally, not his lab, not the nurse. He calls me. He asks me if I developed any new symptoms based on this and that. That's giving it your all in your job. That's giving it with dedication. This is giving. Financial, that's the easiest thing to do. 
write a check, get a toy, buy a gift, send an email. Anyone can do that. How many of you take the time from your busy day to sit and have a meal with someone you care for or have a cup of coffee? Actually have a cup of coffee and have an actual conversation and not just be on your phone and Snapchatting and Instagramming your whole, whole long experience. We're in an overconnected, always connected world where everyone's, there's an on demand everything, everyone's on their phones, everyone's on social media. And this is a phenomenon that we're all having to deal with. It's, it's a fact of life. It's undeniable. It's there. But then how, how can we balance that to not lose our human selves? Because at the end of the day, we're more than just orchestra. Like, it's like everyone's a director now. You go out on an outing, you dress up thinking, I didn't wear this last time, so no one's going to see on my Instagram again. But then you reach to that place, and then you have your meal. And it's like, hold on, hold on, let's take a picture. And you're smiling, though you weren't having a conversation before you were smiling. But then everything is orchestrated. Are you enjoying the, the moment? Are you making memories? Or are you orchestrating moments to post them online for everyone to think, oh, that was amazing. We should totally go to that place. I want this to be as raw and as genuine as possible. I am, we're all guilty of this. I am not, I'm not a person here to, um, I'm not a role model or a, someone who's, who's, who's good at this. I'm a work in progress. I, I have found something. I have found a reason through my postcard initiative and through helping these people in developing countries get their sight back, their families and, and, and everyone around them. But then again, I feel like we can all benefit from this. And it's, it's put everything in perspective for me because things make more sense now. And my priorities are set straight now. And I realized in order for you to be a good giver, you need to give yourself first. And when you give yourself before you start giving others, you know when you're in an airplane and they tell you to put on your life jacket before you help whoever is next to you, even if it was your own child? It's for a reason, because if you're not functioning, you can't help the other person. You need to give yourself, give yourself time. Disconnect, prioritize things, put things into perspective. Know what you want, what you don't want. You, you need to give yourself a good education, a good vacation. You can be a bit selfish because when you're a better person, when you're a happier person, it's easier for you to give. And you give more, and you give more selflessly within the selfish perspective because you're content, you're not bitter. Because what happens usually when you give a lot and you're unhappy, there comes a moment when it turns into bitterness because like I give, 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 but then no one cares. No one's gonna look at you. You're gonna care for yourself first for people to start taking the time out of their busy schedules and, and give back and care for you. So in drawing a close my, my, my talk, I would say it's as simple as your smiling in the face of your brother is charity. So I hope that we can all end this with a smile and thank you so much for hearing me today.